What's happening out there in the crypto verse? Um, I'm back at you with another video. I'm going to be going over the top three charts and pieces of information that I look at when I am evaluating Bitcoin and the rest of the cryptocurrency market in general. And then I'm going to go over tomorrow. I'm going to do a profit trailer and PT feeder update video. Um, I know I've been away for a couple days. I've been just honing in some settings. Uh, I was actually on vacation over the weekend. So I'm back and I'll be on the grind. So if you're not subscribed to the channel and you're interested in getting some just market updates in general, kind of where we're going, my thoughts on the whole situation um, on this correction. And then also if you're interested in profit trailer and PT feeder settings and whatnot, go ahead and subscribe and I'll be updating you guys tomorrow. So the first thing we're on the cryptocurrency market cap page right now. So the first thing I usually look at is where is the market in general? Um, what is the market cap sitting at today? We're at 424 billion, um, up a little bit over, I guess over the weekend, um, Bitcoin has rebounded a little bit to 8,700. Um, but basically what I do is I'll click on the market cap and that brings you to a page that looks like this. And I'm actually, I already have this page open. So I'm going to go back to this. Um, and you can just see <clears throat> the history of the market cap. <coughs> Excuse me. So we're looking here and this was our all time high. We reached, you know, somewhere around 850 billion. And then if you scroll down the page, you can see the dominance of all of the different crypto coins. So this orange is Bitcoin. This purple here is Ethereum. The light blue is Ripple and the white is all the other ones. And, and it gives you more like Litecoin is in there and whatnot but basically those are the ones you want to pay attention to so one thing we have to remember is that these the crypto markets have run in waves ever since it started right ever since altcoins came into existence the cryptocurrency market has gone in waves and so it goes for a while where bitcoin is extremely dominant and then it falls off to altcoins right and you can see the bitcoin dominance down here in what is this june 19th 2017 uh bitcoin was only holding a 37.82 percent market share where ethereum was sitting at 30 percent and then we also have up here we had just come from 86 percent of bitcoin and ethereum was only at five so these market cycles tend to last between six and eight months maybe a little longer maybe a little shorter and as the market matures and becomes larger and larger, we will see that these, these, uh, dominant swings will probably become smaller and smaller over time. But we, we're still very, very early in the crypto market. We're sitting at only in 400 and something billion. So we're still very, very early. And what that means is we can use this to our advantage. So when Bitcoin was at its all time low in, market dominance, we saw a surge in altcoins and all of these other altcoins jumped up to, to major market share. And then all of a sudden we had that Bitcoin rise and look what happened to all the altcoins. They all decreased in value all the way up to Bitcoin's peak at 20,000. And Bitcoin was sitting up there somewhere around 65 to 70% of market dominance again. And that's, that's pretty insane. And then guess what happened? We dipped back down and all the altcoins started to gain more dominance again. And that's kind of where we're sitting at this point in time. So my thought is we still have a little bit of time where Bitcoin is going to sort of regain momentum, regain speed. And this is something that we need to just, just remember, just keep this as one of your, um, I guess metrics that you use to kind of evaluate the crypto markets, right? Cause we will go in cycles and Bitcoin will launch up again and it will take over, um, the market cap again. I don't know how high it will shoot. Will it do what it did before where we were at 86% and then it dropped and then it came back up to 75%. Maybe this time it only goes up to 50% market dominance. Um, but these are things that we want to know because this can give you an idea of, Hey, should I be invested in altcoins or should I be invested in Bitcoin? Well, it's simple 
And, and it's not black and white, but you can look at this chart and say, okay, well, when this seems to be prolonged and it's, it's far enough out where, hey, maybe this thing is about to change and, and I should get it back into Bitcoin. So that's one thing. So then the next thing I wanted to go over was the Bitcoin chart. Now, I use some TA, some different technical analysis. Um, I like to look at Elliott waves. I like the fib retracements. I always use moving averages and pretty much the standard is the 20 period and the 50 period. And then I also like to look at the RSI and I haven't talked about RSI, which is the relative strength index. Um, I like to look at that and then I also look at the volume. So those are really the, the basic fundamental technical analysis tools that you can use um, if you're starting out getting into crypto, you, you just want to understand how to read a chart. Those are the things that I'm looking at. And if you remember from previous videos, I had drawn out this Elliott wave up and this was at the 20,000 point. Then when an Elliott finishes its five wave, we see an Elliott correction wave, which is an A, a B and a C wave down. Now your C wave always contains a five wave within it. So we had our one, our two, our three, four, and five all the way down at our bottom around 6,000. So that is, is basically what I see that, that how it played out. And you can use these moving averages to give you an idea when to buy and sell. When your fast moving average, which is your 20 period, crosses over on the upside of your slow moving average, you're more or less in a bullish pattern okay and this is not always true but this is this is something that you can kind of use to your advantage on a real-time scale so if you're looking at maybe 15 minute charts or something and you're trading daily a lot of these day traders are looking at this stuff and so another thing that they're looking at is this rsi and basically it's this band this purple band and you're looking at it between the 70 mark and the 30 mark. So when this RSI breaks out above the 70 mark, that is generally speaking an overbought situation. So that means that this, this crypto has been overbought and it's due for a bit of a correction. Now, this isn't always true in every case because as you can see up here, I mean, we were sitting at 85 to 90 and, and we did end up with a bit of a correction in this region. So, I mean, that, that really did play out the way we thought it would. The same thing happened here. We were sitting at about 82 corrected down. And as you can see this in this healthy zone, which is in, in this purple band, I mean, we were sitting at about 41. That's pretty healthy. And then we kept launching up. And our fast moving average was still sitting at above this, this red slower moving average. And at that point, we were still on our, on our major bull run, right? And then came this breakout above the 70 line at 73. And that's when we saw a massive panic sell. <laughs> and we ended up down at the RSI level of 22. And this is where you saw kind of our more or less bounce our pullback here, our A wave on our correction. And then the same thing happened again here at 72, we started our long descent down. And the RSI is not something that I use on a trade by trade basis. This is something I more use to evaluate the market in general. And it can give you a good idea of if you think, okay, maybe right here at 6,000, all right, we're way, way oversold, which means things will need to correct and balance out in its proper zone. And that's kind of what, what we're seeing here is we're sort of in a proper RSI level. Um, it gets a little bit high at 61. It gets a little bit lower, 43. But these are just things that we need to look at. So what are my thoughts on Bitcoin right now? So we finished our C wave here and our five corrective wave finished here as well. And then we had a bit of a bounce. And then what I'm seeing is some people are calling this, let me, they're calling this right here, 
not super impulsive. And more or less what that means, I mean, obviously you saw that this moving average is broken out above, the fast moving average is broken out above the slow moving average. That doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna stay that way. We could see another one of these situations where we dip below and we go on a little bit more of a correction and some people are calling for that. So one thing I wanted to do was draw a fib retracement right here. And so what you're seeing, if I zoom this in, we could see another small correction to bring us back inside this descending wedge. Now, I'm hoping just like everybody else that we're gonna stay above this, There's a, that this is a good resistance line now, or a support line, previous resistance becomes support. So hopefully, um, you know, this isn't actually an ABC wave and this is just sort of kind of playing out in this zone up in here. And and maybe we do continue to rise with, with something more like this. Um, this would be ideal. Um, but an alternative scenario that I wanted to bring to light is this 0.618 fib level, which is known as the golden ratio. And it's possible that we have this ABC wave down here to put us right smack in the middle of this descending wedge once again. And I just wanted to bring this up because I've been seeing people all over online saying, hey, we're out of this, we're done, we're done. Um, I, I hope that's the case. I hope we're, I hope we're done with this correction. Um, I, I hope that Bitcoin slowly rises. I don't think we need another one of these massive super mega moves that we had. We don't need this immediate. <laughs> that would be unhealthy. Um, I think that a, a healthy, slow and steady rise would be extremely ideal. And then the reason I want it to go slow <laughs> is because I am using profit trailer and profit feeder. And when Bitcoin is stable and it's not climbing up super fast or decreasing super fast and the market stays healthy in this RSI zone, the volume is healthy. Um, that's when you can really profit big time with a trading bot or just day trading in general, um, because you're, you're taking advantage of a stable Bitcoin. And then these altcoins are rising at you know, 10, 15% in a day, and then they're dropping back 7% the next day. And then they're going up another 15%, then they're dropping 15%. And those swings are where a lot of traders are making a lot of money. And when you have your profit trailer and profit feeder settings set correctly in a market like that, um, you don't necessarily need to be one of those buy and holders and just buy down here and hold, hold until you get up here. Because a lot of those people end up um, riding that wave all the way down. And I'm one of them. Um, I'm definitely a, a buy and hold as well. I'm not selling any of my, my Bitcoin at these levels down here because long term, I think we're going to see, we can probably see a $50,000 Bitcoin at the end of the year. But in the short term, I'm not just going to sit around and not make any money and, and not profit from the situations. You know, you got to, you're dealt the cards and you got to learn to roll with the punches, right? You, you do what you can. So that's what I'm doing. And I'm, I'm happy with where Bitcoin's at right here. Um, in this general region, very steady. And yeah, so I'll give you guys an update on profit trailer and PT feeder tomorrow. And we'll, we'll go over this chart again tomorrow and see how it plays out. And I'm hoping we don't end up with the C wave, but if we do, at least we're aware of it. We can put our, our ladder in or we can ladder in at these levels down here that we might not see for a long time. And we may never see these price levels again if we get here. So that's something to also think about. You got to take advantage of what's given to you. So with that said, subscribe to the channel if you like the content. And if you don't like the content, then, you know, don't subscribe. <laughs> I'll catch you guys in the next one.